Hello there, Eric here. And today I'm just going to run through a simple procedure. If you've ever worked with statistics and with surveys, I'm going to show you how to export your data from the popular online survey and statistical data gathering tool Qualtrics and export that into one of the most popular uh, analytical programs out there, SPSS, and so we can analyze it more deeply, easier, more easier, and uh, have some fun with the data we've collected online. So Qualtrics is easy to get to. It's free in its most simplest form, uh, but I'll start. This is your home page once you log in, and I have my surveys here. And in my surveys, the biggest one I have here is a, a student survey that I took of an entire school district a couple of years ago uh, in their opinions of team teaching in the classroom for English education. That's when an ALT, a native English teacher, is paired up with a Japanese teacher of English in the classroom. If you want to find out more about that, teamteachers.com or my own personal website, Eric Hawkinson Team Teachers, or you can just Google Team Teachers and uh, watch some videos, some more about it. And uh, uh, actually, I think I'm going to try and put the data up that we're going to download together uh, today. So I can go into that survey and look at the questions that I've made. And you can uh, actually still fill this out online. There's divided into pages. There's many different types you can see of questions on this survey from Likert scale to multiple choice to text entry to uh, matrix to simple um, true or false. And uh, there's a barrage of the types of questions you normally see on a survey. So we can get to see how that looks in SPSS. So it's very easy. We're going to go back here. And we'll look at the results, view results, actually. Download data. So we can look at all the results from this particular thing, and it shows us the data here. This is actually the data that is going to export for us into SPSS. And it has some information not even in the questionnaire itself. And we'll, I'll show you that as it gets ported out into SPSS. Okay, so let's go download that data. We want to go all questions. And we can choose down here it says statistical for SPSS. So there there is a option for that. Now, a lot of these options here are only for if you wanted to export that, that into a comma separated values that you're going to import into Excel. But a lot of these options, for example, uh, you want to separate them by period or comma, that is irrelevant for SPSS. So we can just go, go straight down here and download SPSS file. It's going to start putting that together for us here. It's uh, doesn't take long, puts it together, and then it automatically goes downloads it. So then we show that in the folder it's in a zipped file. And I'm just gonna unzip that into its own folder. And there it is, it is a save file. Now I'm gonna go uh, open up SPSS and see how that data looks. This is the latest version as of now for SPSS. Don't want to open up anything that I've opened up already. I'm just going to go as you would normally have it open and go to File, Open, Data. Now I'm going to search for that uh, download that I just got. There it is. It's our save file. We have a student survey, the one I just opened up. Just take a second to go through and open up that data. 
that showed the uh, status screen there, the opposite screen. And now here is our raw data. And notice some of these here are very strange. Default responses, anonymous, and then we have IP addresses here. These are questions not even listed or done that we, when we created the survey itself. And when we go down to variable view, we can see what those are actually. And it's a response ID. It's a, just an idea, ID that Qualtrics gives to every set of data that gets entered. Uh, it's like a session ID um, as uh, the data gets entered into the uh, database. And the name of the set and the IP address from where the connection was made. And uh, email if they're logged in or not, you can show that information as well. The rest of them are labeled as the actual question themselves. And then we have the values here if it is a um, Likert scale or it has a uh, multiple choice, those are all listed in the values as well. And we have a measure and rule too. So <clears throat> as far as I can tell, this did a very good job. I went through and I looked at the, the, the type and I couldn't find anything that I wanted to switch around as far as um, like works I wanted to change something from a nominal to a scale or something like that. It did very well with that. And I think that's to Qualtrics um, merit that this came out. So let's just go look at the the difference between what we might see in our questions in our data set. So if we went and looked here. Go back into here, for example, let's just look at the first question, which is, is a student a junior high school student or an elementary school student? And two options. We'll go back into Qualtrics. We're looking at variable now. There it is. So it's actually the first question in our survey but the 11th data point in in the array in the set and what does that look like here let's see here 11th there we go elementary school students so that's listed of course as the option there Let's look at a different type of question. Let's go find a uh, a Likert scale. Okay, for here's our first Likert. So please answer the following question about your school and learning environment. This is for junior high school students. So actually, these are fort um, questions. These are based upon if, so for example, if only junior high school students would be answering this question, and then it's also reflected in the data in Qualtrics as well. So the, we have a different uh, array of st from between strongly agree and strongly disagree as far as what they think about their learning environments. And that's Q5 listed here. Let's go back into Q5. Now you notice a lot, some of these are just periods they're blank that's because they're not junior high school students they are elementary school students so therefore that data is not there and that goes and now q5 has actually had four points to it right it was a, it was a sort of a matrix it was a uh, the same likert scale in four different questions so we have one two three four so even the naming conventions were pretty good uh, coming from uh, Qualtrics to SPSS and let's look at one more and then we'll call it on this demonstration here let's look at one question towards the end there's a page so let's see here let's look at a sort of a coded question then so Q7 
A. What activities do you do most during team teaching lessons? This is asking students uh, if their if their normal teacher, their homeroom teacher, their English teacher is accompanied by a native speaker of English in a team teaching lesson, two teachers in the classroom, what activities are you doing the most? Okay, so let's go find that in our SPSS. And that was 7A. There we go. And that, well, again, that was coded for, oh, that wasn't a required question, so it's not there for many of the students. And it's created by number. Let's make sure that's right. No, I was looking probably at the wrong place. There it is, 7A123. Let's go back to variable to make sure what's going on with that. Seven. Oh, there we go. I see. So this is what happened. What's happening with this question is that they're able to do choose multiple times, up to three things that they're doing for the same question. So now, how does SPSS handle that with data? So now. It's, challenge, it's changed that into actual questions in, them, in, the, in and of themselves, and it's going to view that as a true or false in each case. And so as, uh, Qualtrics is, a, is taking the one question and giving, letting the responder give three up to three answers for it, and we're inputting that into SPSS as separate entities, sub-questions, as in... Uh, an on or an off type situation for each one. And of course, there's only going to be three for each one. How does that look in the data? You can see there are three one one ones for each of those sets of materials. So it's pretty intuitive as far as I'm concerned. You just have to go in and look at your data and kind of see how that was inputted, see how that was transferred over. But um, I'm finding this uh, almost like a godsend as far as analyzing this data is uh, much, much better in SPSS than uh, the analytical properties and tools actually on the Qualtrics website, although they are pretty good themselves. Um, if you have any further questions, you want to know a little bit more about that, just comment and like, like subscribe. And uh, again, my name is Eric, and this was looking at Qualtrics exporting into SPSS. You have a good day.